All right, thank you very much. I would like to welcome everyone dialed in on their computers and everyone listening in on, to, on the phones to today's webinar, Online Tools for Finding New Markets, as a part of the World Trade Month Go Global webinar series. This webinar is the third part in a four-part series. Hosted by the U.S. Census Bureau, this webinar series was created by your federal trade partners, the U.S. Small Business Administration, the Export-Import Bank of the United States, the U.S. Census Bureau, International Trade Administration, U.S. Commercial Service, U.S. Agency for International Development, and U.S. Trade and Development Agency. So we've all come together to bring you this helpful webinar series. This in-depth webinar series provides you the government resources to help you become a successful exporter from finding compatible markets to financing your export program to discovering international opportunities. These webinars will take place every Thursday at 2 p.m. Eastern Time during the month of May. Each webinar is completely free and, again, a great way for you to understand the valuable resources that the U.S. government has to offer for you. The next webinar, Learning About International Opportunities, will be held next Thursday, May the 30th at 2 p.m. Please be aware, after the speakers have completed their presentations today, we will again open up the webinar for a question and answer session. Keep in mind, we also have the chat feature available, so as you're listening in and you have questions that you would like to submit during the chat, we will review those and then ask some of those questions during the Q&A portion as well. By the end of today's webinar, our goal is to make sure that you walk away with answers to the following questions. What online tools exist to help me find new markets? How can I use trade data and other information to make more informed decisions? As I stated earlier, my name is Omari Wood, and I am your host today from the U.S. Census Bureau. I am joined by Patrick Kuhn, survey statistician, also with me here at the U.S. Census Bureau and also Morgan Barr, an international economist from the Office of Trade Negotiations and Analysis with the International Trade Administration. So now that I've gone over the introductions, I would now like to turn the presentation over to Patrick, who's going to walk us through some of these online tools. Thank you, Omari. Well, so good afternoon. Uh, I'm Patrick Kuhn, and I'm from the International Trade Microanalysis Branch in the Economic Indicators Division. Now, today I'm going to show you two tools for accessing and utilizing trade data. First, I will be covering the USA Trade Online Database, and then the second part of the presentation will cover our Global Market Finder tool. So you may be wondering, uh, what is USA Trade Online? USA Trade Online is the official source of international trade data. This data tool gives users access to current and cumulative U.S. export and import data. Uh, new, data new data are added every month. When, inter when the International Goods and Services Report is released jointly by the Census Bureau and the Bureau of Economic Analysis. This monthly release occurs roughly 30 to 35 days after the end of the calendar reference month, typically within the first five business days of the month. On release day, the International Goods and Services Report is released at 8.30 a.m. It can take up to an hour for the data to become available in USA Trade Online. Uh, this is because the USA Trade Online tracks more than the International Goods and Services Report. In fact, it covers over 17,000 import commodities and over 9,000 export commodities between the Harmonized System and the North American Industry Classification System. USA Trade Online has many users, from people in industry and government to academia. Uh, by the end of the day, we hope you'll understand how and why USA Trade Online is used by a wide range of data users. USA Trade Online has detailed data in what you could say are four distinct databases. We have databases on um, district-level data, port-level data, state-level data, and also on NAICS, uh, otherwise known as the North American Industry Classification System. Each database has different levels of detail available. For instance, port, port data includes information on method of transportation, whereas NAICS has balance of trade data. We'll examine the exact level of detail each database has later in the presentation. 
USA Trade Online um, also has many useful features, most of which I will demonstrate for you today. Uh, perhaps the most important feature here is the customized reports. Using customized reports, you can combine commodities, countries, states, ports, or time periods into customized groups for your data needs. You can also save your reports and view them at any time. You can also have them update automatically as we update data. Uh, you can also sort the data in USA Trade Online or export it to your computer for your own custom calculations. And as I just mentioned, USA Trade Online offers data in two classification systems, uh, the Harmonize System, or HS, and North American Industry Classification System, or NAICS. The HS data share the same six-digit headings for imports and exports. Their differences arise over the final four digits of their 10-digit codes. These divisions create the distinction for exports under the Schedule B classification and imports under the Harmonized Tariff System. Um, for a complete list of codes, please visit the links on these slides. The second classification system we have available is the North American Industry Classification System, otherwise known as NAICS. While our NAICS data is product-based, it matches other census industry classification, meaning this data provides a broader picture than the HS system. For example, the detail under the six-digit levels level of NAICS could show you data on passenger vehicles or potatoes. While under the more detailed harmonized system, you could find out if those vehicles were trucks, light automobiles, or tractor trailers, and if those, these potatoes were organic, russet, or red potatoes. And so now we're actually going to switch to a live version uh, using USA Trade Online. So first, I'm going to show you how to access USA Trade Online, and it's as simple as navigating to census.gov slash foreign-trade. Foreign um, and over here on the left-hand side, by under important links, you will see a link to USA Trade Online. If you click that, that will bring you to the home page. And upon clicking the link, you'll be brought to the login page. And if you're a first-time user, you will need to sign up by creating an account uh, with your email address. You will also be assigned a distinct username. Okay, once you have logged in, you will be brought to what we call the data source selection page, uh, right here. And this will be your starting point for accessing data related to your query. Uh, you'll notice we have distinct databases, as I mentioned earlier. Um, we have the district level database, um, the port level, state level databases, and also a database um, regarding NAICS. you also notice we have a couple uh, quick reports um, down here in the drop-down arrow. And these quick reports, um, it, so if you're interested in our top trading partners, um, top trade categories, HS port level data, or state import and export data, we've created some basic tables and charts you might find helpful. Now, these quick reports deal with very high level aggregate data, so if you're interested in more detailed information, you'll need to compile a report yourself, as I will demonstrate over the next few slides here. You can also navigate up to the My Reports tab in the top left, and here all of the saved uh, customizable reports that you created will be accessible. So back over to the PowerPoint real fast for one quick slide. Okay, um, so our first example. So say you are a business owner um, who has a sporting goods store, and you want to expand your business to include fishing rods, and you're looking for some information on the following questions. How many fishing rods were imported into the United States in 2018? What were the top 10 countries for fishing rod imports in 2018? And what were the average prices for each of the top 10 countries? So, we'll go back over to USA Trade Online here. Okay, and for this uh, example, we're looking for an individual product, so we want as detailed as possible on this, these fishing rods, um, detailed selection, I should say, as possible. And we're, so we're going to look in the Harmonize system, because that's the most detailed database for products. And we're also dealing with imports, so we'll select the import uh, category here. Okay, so now we're able to actually build our um, report, if you will. And so on the left-hand side, you can see we have uh, a bunch of variables under the report contents. And we're able to select uh, and choose whatever variables we want to build our query. And so we, you can see commodity is currently selected. So we are on the commodity selection screen here. And here um, you can, look, you can uh, select your commodity one of uh, three different ways here. You can start by what we call drilling down 
which is where you just go to the commodity heading. You expand that. You expand the next uh, next row, and you keep going until you get to your appropriate commodity. Uh, but you can see this can kind of be a little confusing because you need to really know your products, and you have to go by just like the headings. That's not the most efficient, and it can be quite tedious. If you have to know your harmonized number, you can also type in uh, whatever the harmonized number is, for example. Hit enter, it will take you right to that, uh, your harmonized number, your product, if it exists, or if it's the correct number. Or you could simply um, search for uh, fishing rods, just a basic quick search. Okay, and you see, you see we have uh, five, five results here. The first one is 9507 fishing rods and tackle, nets, decoys, et cetera, parts, et cetera. So that does include fishing rods, but it, it also includes a bunch of additional information that we don't necessarily want to view in our reports. Um, you know, we, we only want to capture fishing information solely on fishing rods. So again, we go to the next code, 950710, which is fishing rods and parts and accessories. Again, it captures additional information besides fishing rods. But the third choice here, 9507, uh, 1000040 fishing rods, NO, which stands for number of fishing rods, that is the most accurate detailed classification. And so we will select uh, that as our commodity. All right, and now we will move on to measures. Uh, so up under the report's contents, we can select measures to get additional variables. And so at this screen, we can see that all the measures available in this data set here. And for the purposes of our example, we are looking at the value, the volume, and the price. So we're going to select customs value general. For volume, we're going to select quantity one general. And then for unit price, we're going to select customs unit price value general. Now you might be asking me, well, what's the difference between customs value general or customs value cons? Well, cons actually stands for consumption. And if you scroll down, you have all the definitions of each individual variable and what that variable entails. And so you can scroll down, or you can possibly go up to measures, now where we have a little blue uh, link or a little blue dot, and this will open up the definitions in a new pop-up um, window. Another thing to uh, notice here, uh, next to customs value general, is in red, it says default member. So if we, if we did not make a choice under measures, um, USA Trade Online would automatically choose customs value general as the default member, exactly as it says. So each one of these categories over here on the left, measures, commodity, country, country, subcode, district, rate provision, time, they all have a de default selection. So even if we don't address, make a choice in one of these uh, categories, um, USA Trade Online will automatically choose the default one and allow us to run our report. So now that we have our measures, we can go down to country on the left-hand side. And so in this example, we're interested in all in the top 10 countries that we export uh, or that we imported fishing rods from. So we want to select all countries in the world uh, for our example. And we can do this by expanding next to world total here. And we can see that uh, below we have all each individual country in the world. Now we can go through and individually check each one, but that will be a little time consuming. Um, but we can just as easily go up to the green check mark here next to world total, select that, and that will uh, select every country. It also includes world total, but we're not necessarily interested in the world total for fishing rod imports. So we can deselect that. Okay. So now we can move on down to time. And now, so in this example, we're not necessarily interested in country subcode. We're not interested in customs district or in rate provision. Um, and so we can skip these choices and go straight to time. And just like I mentioned with measures up here, each one of these has a default member, a default selection that allows us to bypass them. Now for time, you can see that we have annual data going back to 1992 and we have monthly data going back to 2002. So if we hit the plus sign next to 2002, we can expand that, and we can see we have uh, individual months we could select if we wanted to. 
Uh, however, for this example, we're solely interested in 2018. So we can uh, simply check 2018. And now we're ready to create our report. And we just uh, we can create the report by going up here to the top, Report Contents. And there is a little uh, link for reports. We check that, and we get this resulting table. Um, now, this this table it's, isn't in the very in the most presentable format. Um, you know, we aren't so we're not able to really answer our questions right right away just by uh, looking at it. But we can do some take some simple steps to really format it and put it in a very usable uh, format. So we can do this by a. You know, I'm just hovering over commodity, so we see all four arrows, and we can click and drag commodity up to the top kind of like a heading for this uh, table. And we can do the same with time as well. We hover over time, click and drag, move it up. And we can also um, move country down to the uh, rows. So we again, hover over country, click and drag down to where measures is. And this kind of alternates the table down to uh, this elongated fashion. But again, we still have all these um, cells and fields that are blank because we're not importing a lot of fishing rods from other, all these, from Afghanistan or Albania. Um, we're only interested, again, in the top 10 countries. So we can very easily um, get remove a lot of these uh, excess fields by going here to this icon, which is the top bottom reduction next to Customs Value General. If we click on that, we will select the top because we're looking for the top 10, um, and we want a count of 10. Simply enter 10, hit OK. And we can see that you know, the system uh, has generated the top 10 countries uh, for cut by customs value. And we can easily put this in descending order by clicking the down arrow. And you can see here that you know, China was the top country uh, with 155 million, then South Korea and so forth. You can also order by quantity one, um, or you can uh, order them by customs unit value as well. So that's kind of how you can use the uh, USA Trade Online to analyze your market a little bit and see um, and analyze, view the data. Um, so now we'll go back to the PowerPoint real fast for another quick example. Okay. So say you're an entrepreneur um, and you run a company that creates light protective coverings for contact lenses so that they do not break during flight. You're interested in what airports most contact lenses leave the country as to set up advertising there about your product. And so you're interested in generating a report that looks at the following. Um, what are the top ports for export of contact lenses by air value? And what is the air shipping weight at each port? Now we'll go back over to uh, USA Trade Online. And again, we start at the data source selection page. And for this example, we are interested in ports. So we're going to look at port level data. And we're also interested in exports. So we will choose this uh, right here. So in this example, let's start with measures. So since we are looking at air transportation, you know, we, are, we are going to pick air total exports value and air total export shipping weight. Again, if you want to know what the definitions of these uh, variables are, you can just as easily look at them right here or hit this uh, little blue circle up here. Uh, but also you should notice that some of the variables under measures are a little different than what we had with the prior example. Um, for, this, uh, for this example, we have information on method of transportation. And we also have you know, export value. We're not dealing with imports anymore. Um, so that's just some of the variation that you get from imports and exports and also state, port, and HS level data. Okay, so now we can move on to port, which is right below measures. And again, with this example, we're interested in looking at every individual port within the U.S. Um, so currently, we can see a bunch of districts are showing up. And that is, if we hit the plus sign next to, say, the Anchorage, Alaska district, we can see that uh, once it loads here, we can see that multiple pol ports comprise a single district. Um, however, we are only interested in selecting the ports. And we can simply do this by going up to the green check marks here, hovering over them, 
We hover over the one in the furthest to the left, and we see it says select total all ports. Well, we're not interested in the total of all ports. We can move to the one on the right. Hover over it, it says select all districts. Again, we're not interested in districts. We're interested in all ports, which just happens to be the next one, this one. It says select all individual ports. We can click that. And again, we can see that each individual port has been selected. And now we can move down to commodity on the report contents page. And so again, in this case, we're dealing with contact lenses. So we can very simply just type in contact lens, and hit search. And you'll notice that in this time, this case, we only have one uh, result, which is, you know, 900130 contact lenses. So notice that this code is only six digits as the full 10-digit codes are not available in the port level data set. Data is limited to six-digit codes to prevent disclosure issues. You know, since ports are geographically very defined, it's more likely data users would be able to determine which business is responsible for said data. And at census, we, protecting business data is of the utmost importance. So now, in this case, we can skip, skip country and move to time after making our contact selection. And again, because we were not interested in which country these contact lenses are going to, we're solely interested in that they're being exported from the U.S. via a port. And so again, with this case, with the, this example, we're only interested in 2018, so we will select that. But you also notice that, in this case, um, we only have data sets available back to 2003, whereas the prior example, we had annual data back to 1992. Um, however, you know, for ports, we have monthly data going back to 2003 and annual data back to 2003 as well. So a little different data set uh, in this example. So we select 2018, and once again, we are ready to generate our report. We come up here to the top, we select report. Once again, we get a table that's very elongated, not the best format for answering our questions, uh, but we can very simple, make some simple maneuvers to uh, correct that. So again, we can take commodity, click and drag and move it up. We can uh, do the same thing with time. And we can also move port down to the rows. And again, just like the last example, we have multiple cells, um, cells in this table that there's no data there uh, because we're not exporting contacts to, from those ports. Um, we can handle that again with a little different um, route this time. So up in the toolbar, if we go to the table options, we can click suppress values, and we'll check rows where all values are empty or zero, and we hit OK. And we can see that all those cells and rows that did not have any values disappeared. And again, we can very, easy, very easily put these uh, um, cells in order um, by sorting the sending by hitting the down arrow. And we can see that the Port of Orlando, Florida had the highest uh, value of exports of contacts in 2018. Uh, then close, followed closely by Atlanta, Georgia and JFK International Airport. If we wanted to move to export shipping weight, we can go over to that column and hit the down arrow. And we can see that Newark, New Jersey and Miami um, were the top the two highest exports. That's kind of how you can maybe see where you want to place your advertisements just by uh, looking at that. Now, another feature that I mentioned is saving and customizing your reports. So if you go up to the top toolbar here, you can click on this floppy disk and save your report as. Uh, maybe I'll just name it contact lenses. Hit OK. Then I'll go back to the data source selection page. And so maybe in the future, I can come back, go to my reports. And there's the report I created, you know, maybe a couple weeks ago or so. And this just allows you to save your reports and then go back and uh, view them again in the future. All right, so now we'll move on um, to a final couple slides with uh, USA Trade Online. Okay, um, so here's a quick reference um, for data available on USA Trade Online for exports. Um, as previously discussed, the HS district level is the only data set with 10-digit HS codes. Port and state level has data by method of transportation, and NAICS has trade balance data. 
And we have a similar slide for imports. Um, so here's the same page for imports. Um, this imports side has additional information at the district level, like statistics by rate provision and country subcode, along with additional measures like CIF value, calculated duty, and dutyable value. The other data sets are very similar to the export side, with some difference in time period at the state level. So this concludes my presentation on USA Trade Online, and I will now move on to the Global Market Finder. Okay. So the Global Market Finder is the newest international trade tool on census.gov. The Global Market Finder has been in the works for several years now, and we finally released a beta version back in November of 2018. We created the Global Market Finder to provide companies with a simple tool for identifying new export markets. And unlike USA Trade Online, the Global Market Finder does not require you to set up an account or to require a password. It also doesn't involve creating a report. The tool is very easy to access and is very simple to navigate. And so as I mentioned, this is a beta version. Um, it will be slow and it can potentially crash depending on the amount of users it has at any given time. We are aware of this and we are in the process of fixing these issues along with adding additional features. So please feel free to share with us any feedback, positive or negative, regarding your experience with this tool. Okay, so I'm actually going to go ahead and switch back over to the live side and go to, and I'll show you how to access the Global Market Finder. Um, so for the Global Market Finder, all you need to do is get to census.gov, up here at Library, if you click that, that opens up the uh, Infographics and Visualizations link. And on the left-hand side, if you go down to Interactive Gallery, and you can select All, and you scroll down to the Global Market Finder. And so the Global Market Finder um, can be broken down into two parts. You have the top here where you need to select your commodity code or Schedule B code. Then you have the bottom where you have four data visualizations based on your commodity choice. Um, so again, note that this search is just a very a simple plain text search engine. Um, so if you're able to, if you're unable to find your commodity, then I suggest using um, the Schedule B search engine, which can be accessed via this uh, question mark here. And you can find that on the Schedule B page at Foreign Trade. Um, but if you have further questions about the Schedule B search engine or about um, the HCS search, unfortunately those are out of the purview of this presentation. But if you contact me, I can uh, address, send you to the right area to answer your question about further classifying your product. If you're, because these search bars um, for both USA Trade Online and for the Global Market Finder is just a very basic search. Okay, so let's go pick it up um, with um, uh, fishing poles or fishing rods just like our first example. We just merely type it in. And we will see that the uh, tool gives us two choices. Uh, fishing rods number, which is the most detailed, and that's the one we're interested in, so we can select that. And we scroll down and we see um, what is called the, the map visualization, if you will. And the map visualization is exactly as it tells you. Um, it, it maps for 2017, all of the exports of fishing rods from the U.S., so all of our trade partners for that year under that category. And the top five uh, countries by value are in red. So if you just hover over one of the dots, you will get the pertinent information such, from it, such as the country, the year, the total export value, and the quantity. And you can also hover over a blue dot too, um, just realize those are not the top five, one of the top five trading partners. You can also do the map if you will, like in tabular form. So you can view all the countries in table format if you prefer. You can very simply sort and by hovering over the variable and clicking on the icon that will you know, put them in ascending or descending order based on your preference. You also have the ability to change the year. Um, but notice that we only have data going back to 2013. Um, that is because for the Global Market Finder, it's Again, it's annual data from 2013 all the way to 2017. Um, however, in future updates, we do, we do hope to add more data sets um, to this tool. You can also isolate an individual country if you prefer. 
Now, however, the most useful feature of the Global Market Finder, I believe, is the unit price tool. So on the far right, let's start in a graph mode. So as you can see here, we have a graph of the, uh, the average unit price for a good of each, of each country. Each country is plotted in a, uh, in a blue dot. And we can see how can they compare to the, uh, the trend line, which is the average unit price. Um, so this regression line here represents the average unit price. Now let's take an example of, say, Mexico here. We can see that Mexico, the average unit price of a fishing rod uh, export in 2017 was $40.80. So maybe, maybe your company um, exports fishing rods. Well, you can look at this chart and you can see, well, hmm, maybe I have a more premium fishing rod, a fishing rod that's a little more expensive. Maybe there is a market for you down in Mexico um, to export your product, your fishing rod, uh, because Mexico seems like the uh, fishing rods average a little lower uh, unit price. If it's a little farther behind, uh, below the trend line, whereas Conversely, if we go to the Netherlands, we see that the Netherlands is a little higher than the trend line, and that the average unit price of a fishing rod to, Me uh, to Netherlands was $171.46. So in that case, if maybe um, you, again, you're an exporter of fishing rods, maybe you don't have a premium fishing rod price that high, maybe you can go in and undercut the market in, uh, to the Netherlands. So that's just one of the ways of how you can uh, use the unit price tool to um, you know, find a possible export market for you. And one thing to keep in mind is not all commodities have a unit of quantity, so the unit of price an analysis tool is not available for all goods. And again, you know, you can you have the table tabular format if you want, you can change the year, you can isolate an individual country if you prefer. Um, but we will move on to the, uh, the time series uh, data visualization. And the time series does exactly as it uh, says. Now, it graphs you know, all the years from 2013 to 2017. If you hover over the individual dot, you can see the total value of export um, from the U.S. And keep in mind this is aggregate across the whole, the whole world, every country. Um, we could easily select an individual country if we prefer. So we can see that you know, the trend of uh, fishing rod exports has fallen over the last few years. And then the final um, uh, visualization is the methods of transportation. Um, so this, ta this tab allows you to see how exporters are shipping their products. Um, so it includes a breakdown of air here. We got vessels, um, containerized or non-containerized vessels, and we also have other. And other includes uh, rail, truck, and then other minor methods of transportation. So we can see here that it looks like in 2017, um, most of the fishing rod exports from the U.S. were exported via airplane. Okay. All right, so that pretty much concludes my report, or my uh, presentation for uh, Global Market Finder. Again, it is in beta mode, um, so feel free to give us any comments, uh, both positive or negative, after you use the tool. And uh, here's my contact information, along with the contact information of the Macro Analysis Branch, the branch that actually maintains both of these tools. Um, reach out to us if you have any questions, and we can walk you through uh, either of the tools. And so now I will actually turn it over to Morgan uh, for her presentation. Thanks, Patrick. So today I am going to talk about the International Trade Administration's new market diversification tool. Uh, which we released uh, in November of 2018, so it's been out for six months or so. Um, as Amari said, I work in ITA, and I'm in the Industry and Analysis Bureau um, of ITA. And we're the part of the International Trade Administration that hosts industry experts, as well as the Data and Analysis Shop, which is where I work. Um, and that's really where the idea for this tool came from, as part of our normal work we analyze large data sets to help develop policy priorities and negotiate trade agreements. So we wanted to see if we could leverage that internal expertise 
um, to build an analytical tool for public use. And since 58% of U.S. exporters only export to one market, um, finding additional markets for existing exporters seems like a good use case. Essentially, the market diversification tool uses an exporter's current trade patterns to make recommendations on additional markets you may want to consider. And it's really meant to be a starting point for market research where you can get a quick idea of potential markets for your product and then refine your search from there. Just a note on um, its relationship with the other tools you've seen today, it's really a complementary tool um, and a little different from both USA Trade Online and the Global Market Finder. First, it makes recommendations um, on additional markets rather than just displaying trade data using its internal algorithm. Second, it uses international trade data rather than U.S. trade data. So with the other tools you've seen today, you can get that really detailed level of U.S. export data. Our tool uses the foreign import data. So it's a little more aggregated, but I'll show you in a minute why we use that. Uh, additionally, the market diversification tool has more than just trade data, uh, which we'll talk about in a minute. So what exactly does the tool do? Well, first it's going to need some information from you, such as the product or products that you currently export and where you currently export. It uses this information in an algorithm that pulls in other relevant data, including trade data for your product, data on the tariffs you might expect to pay in various markets, an assessment of the rule of law in each market, and whether markets speak the same languages as they do where you're already exporting. As this data is incorporated into the algorithm, each indicator is given a specific weighting, and then a score is calculated for each potential market, and then the markets are ranked by those scores. You can dig into the data used in the tool to determine why certain markets might have ranked higher or lower, and you can modify the search to tailor it to your specific needs. You can also access other resources to help with your market research. You need just four pieces of information to use the tool, and you should either already have this information or should be able to get it from your export documentation. The first thing you need to know is the product or products that you already export. We define these numbers, um, these products in the tool by their six-digit harmonized system numbers, which Patrick talked about a little earlier. So if you have your Schedule B number, you can just take the first to six digits of that. The second thing you need is your current export market. So where are you currently exporting? The third thing is your markets that you want to consider. So this is what you want to see in the results. An important note is that the tool is only going to compare and include in the calculations the countries that you select here. So are you thinking about just pursuing a regional strategy and just want to look at um, markets in one region? Do you want to compare a specific list of countries? Or do you want to see the whole world and start from there? The tool lets you choose. The last thing you're going to need is your zip code. And this is because the tool will connect you to your local commercial service office. There are 11 indicators in the tool. Three are product specific, so the data is specific to the product or products that you have entered into the tool. The other eight are country level indicators. They help show whether a market is generally a good place for exporting and doing business. A lot of those indicators come from the World Bank because they compare every country in the world on the same factors. The first product specific indicator is historic trade, which looks back at whether the market has been a large importer of that product from the United States. The second is potential trade growth, which aims to measure the potential growth in U.S. exports of the product to that market. It looks at things like whether we're underperforming in that market relative to similar countries, whether the country's imports of the product have been increasing, and whether the economy, economy is growing, um, the country's economy has been growing. The third product-specific indicator is the maximum average tariff. It's defined as an average because we're using data at the subheading or six-digit level rather than the national line level. So it's an average of the national line tariffs in that subheading. Each indicator in the tool is given its own weight in the equation. So that's how much it contributes to the overall score. All of the weights then have to add up to 100%. This is the breakdown of the standard weights in the tool that we've calibrated so that the overall score is a good indication of whether the market is a good place to export. As you can see, historic trade, which is the big blue box, has the heaviest weight in the standard weights at 50%. And then the trade weight or the trade growth indicator has another 10% of the weight. 
And this means that the two trade indicators contribute the most to the overall country score. The other indicators would then contribute less. And the biggest implication for these standard weights is that the countries that have historically imported the most from the U.S. will tend to be at the top of the results because that indicator it has, um, is weighted so heavily. Um, so countries that are big markets with a lot of imports or countries that have a strong preference for American products uh, in that HS number are going to tend to float to the top. But you can also adjust the weighting in the tool to address your specific needs. So now I'm going to go to the tool itself. Uh, the easiest way to find the tool is just go to export.gov forward slash market diversification. I'm just going to drag this over. Okay, so when you get to the tool site, this is what you're going to see. Um, there are some links here at the top. Uh, the first page, why use the tool, is just an introduction, and then you're going to see the other links. About the tool has detailed instructions on how to use the tool, um, including a video um, that goes through a lot of what we're doing today, but in more detail. Uh, there's also an interpreting your results page which goes through how to look at the results, how the algorithm works, why some markets may rank higher or lower, and what the different indicators mean. So this is also a great reference for later when you forget everything I've said today and you actually want to use the tool and you need a refresher course. Uh, there's also a uh, page for FAQs and a data availability table, which has um, information explaining what data we use in the tool for each country. So what years of trade data we have, and what year the, tra the tra uh, tariff data is from. What we're going to focus on right now is the tool itself, which here is here in the middle of the page, and it's really simple to use. Um, this is where you're going to enter the four pieces of information. So the first box is for your HS number. Um, you can enter multiple products if you export multiple products, but the tool is going to treat those products as a group, and so they're going to add up the trade data. I recommend just using one or two products at a time so you can clearly see the different trade patterns for the products. Even two really closely related six digits could have remarkably different trade patterns. So I'm going to enter a number into the box. Here I'm assuming we export lipstick, um, which this is the HS number for that. So then in the second box, we're going to enter our current markets. Once you click in it, you'll see a list. You can type a country in. I'm just going to pick Canada, or assume, assume like many U.S. exporters, we currently export to Canada. Uh, if you type in the wrong country, you can just get rid of it by clicking an X. And you can put in um, as many markets as you want here. So the third thing you're going to need to select is really critical information. And so this is what you want to see in the results. And so like I said before, the, the tool is only going to um, include in the calculations the countries that you pick here. So there's three radio buttons here. You can search the whole world. You can pick a specific region. If you do that, a, um, a box will pop up where you can spec uh, specify which regions you want to choose. You can pick more than one region if you want, or you can pick specific countries, um, and then it'll change it to a country box. If you're just choosing a specific list of countries, I recommend you use at least four or five because it's only going to compare them to each other. So if you only choose two countries, you're, you have a total data set of just two data points um, for the two countries. So I, I, I recommend using at least a handful. Um, for right now, I'm just going to search the whole world, and then I am going to put my zip code in here. Then the last thing you can do is just limit the result. Um, it doesn't limit what's in the calculations, but just what's displayed on the screen. So once we have all of our data put in, I'm going to click Submit. You'll see a Calculating button, and then our results will appear. They're just going to appear right below the menu. So if you need to change anything, you can go right back up to the top, click Submit again, um, and it'll change it. So uh, this blue box here at the top is if you want to change the weighting for the different indicators. There's additional information on how, and how to do that and why you might want to. Um, uh, under the uh, How to Interpret Your Results page. Below that, uh, we see an HS number and our description of our product, so we can make sure we entered the correct HS number. Um, and below that's our actual results. So you can see here the countries are listed in order. 
Uh, the algorithm calculates an overall score for each market, and you can see those numbers in bold next to each country. So the UK here has a score of 83. These scores are going to range from 0 to 100. Um, so if, and, and like I said, here we're seeing the whole world, but if we re-ran the, the results for just a specific region, these scores and the ranking are going to change because it's only going to compare those countries to each other. So looking at the results, there's a box for each market. It shows you the overall score, the average imports from the United States, so that's the historic trade indicator, and the maximum average tariff. But if you click on that market, it will open up and you can see all of the data that's used in the tool. Uh, it can be difficult to kind of go back and forth between the different boxes. So if you want, you can also download all of the results from your search to a CSV file, which you can just open in Excel or any other spreadsheet program that you use. Um, and then you can also add in any other indicators that might be relevant for your product. So for example, if you're exporting snowblowers, uh, you're going to want to know the average annual snowfall for each country, um, which is not relevant for 99% of the products in the database, but is for you. Um, the results are going to show you the first 10 markets, and then you're, you can go um, to the next pages to see the rest. Um, so how do we interpret these results? I'm just going to give a really brief overview of it here, um, but more information is on the Interpreting Your Results page. So the first thing we see is the overall scores. Like I said, those can range from 0 to 100. Sometimes you'll run a search and the top one will only be 50, which is not a super great score. But here the UK has a score of 83, which is pretty high. And then the next few countries are in the 60s and 50s. And so there's a big gap there. Uh, and this can happen if one country has the top or almost top scores in multiple indicators or if it has a significantly higher score in the heaviest weighted indicator. Um, we see here that the UK has a really high number for average imports from the US. That's the historic trade indicator, worth 50% of the overall score. As you look at the next few, they're, they're a little more than half of that value. Um, so we can see right away that's probably why the UK is, is rated first. Um, we can also open up the data and we'll see that uh, the UK's import growth rate for this product is really high at almost 10% a year. Um, and the import growth rate is a factor in the potential trade indicator, which is the second highest weighted in, uh, indicator in the algorithm. And then they also have good scores in a lot of the other country level indicators like rule of law. So these are all factors that make the UK stand out. And again, if we were going to run the search results again using different rates, uh, weights for the different indicators, the scores and rankings would change. Um, and they would also change if we just looked at one region or a group of countries in the search results. Uh, so what, what I recommend is that you might have to run your search a few different ways to really focus in on the type of markets you want to consider. Like, do you want to look at big markets, fast-growing ones, uh, ones that are easier to export to? Uh, there's a lot of information on the website about how to do that. Um, and again, so, so just as an explanation of why we're using the international trade data, so here we're using uh, the United Kingdom's or the EU's imports from the world and from the U.S. And what that allows us to do that you can't get just from using U.S. export data is the U.S. import share. So what share of their imports of this product are coming from the U.S.? And that allows us to see whether we are uh, underperforming in the UK relative to other countries that are similar, like the rest of Western Europe, um, which we use to calculate the import share gap. So uh, trade data comes in lots of different shapes and forms, and you may want to look at it in different ways uh, to get different perspectives on it. Which takes me to um, our recommendations underneath your results, you're going to see your local commercial service office. This will give you the address and contact information for them. For me, mine is uh, Bill Fanjoy in Northern Virginia. Uh, and below that, there's additional recommend recommendations on what to do next. Uh, so I said that this tool is really just a starting point for market research. Um, so first, we recommend that you really dig into your results and interpret them um, in great detail. Then we recommend looking at additional trade data, um, and there's instructions for here, here for how to do that. Uh, take a deeper look at the tariffs you might face. So we recommend using our customs info database to look at the actual national line tariffs you might face in the markets you're focusing on. 
Um, and then additional market research resources, such as the commercial services country commercial guides, um, our top markets report, or contacting your local commercial service office. Below that is just some citations for where the data comes from. Um, so that is all I have. I'm going to go back to the PowerPoint presentation here. Um, and here is my contact information. Also, there's an email address on the tool website. That email just goes to me anyway, so you can contact me at either one. Um, and I will turn it back over to Amari. All right, thank you very much, Morgan. And I'd like to also thank Patrick very much today for all of the great information that they shared with us. Right here on the slide, you will see the information for our next webinar in this series, which also happens to be our last webinar in this series entitled Opportunities in International Development, which will be on May 30th, and again, it will be at 2 p.m. Eastern Time. So at this point, we're going to now open it up for questions and answers. Again, I would like to ask the audience to limit their questions to one question with one follow-up question. But before I open it up to the call, we're going to go through a few questions that we received through the chat feature, and I'll share those questions with our speakers. So one question that came up is for the international trade for Patrick. Can you also run a report for exports for products to the top 100 countries? Because your example shows the top 10. So yes, uh, it's very easy. Uh, just to, like in our first example, um, I only filtered for the top 10 countries, even though it was imports. But you can easily select exports and then filter by the top 100, top 50, top 1,000, uh, even 1,000 countries. But. Yeah, it's very easy to do. Okay, great. Uh, does the trade online tool also look at exports to other countries by commodity codes? Yes. Uh, once again, you can look at either import or exports to um, from other countries or to other countries. Um, so yeah, it's very easy to do. Um, yeah. Okay, and one other question. I understand that the NAICS. North American Industrial Classification System is at a broader six-digit level. But wouldn't that be the same as pulling HTS data at the six-digit level instead of drilling down to the 10-digit level? So they're really asking a comparison of the NAICS versus the six-digit HTS. Oh. Uh, we have uh, Jeremy here who's going to he can better explain that than I can, a little more experience. So, so NAICS and uh, HDS, HTS or other HS codes, um, even though they, there are six-digit HS codes and six-digit NAICS codes, um, they might not correspond to the same commodity codes, so they have their own groupings and they kind of have different purposes. So the NAICS codes are more to be in line with our other census economic data, so you might find that those commodity groupings are different. So what I would suggest is to take a look at both um, the H HS six digit and the NAICS six digit and see which one works better for what your purposes are. Great, thanks. So I have one more question and then we'll open it up for the phones for Morgan. Can I use the market tool to compare cities such as Ontario and Quebec? Uh, so no, we only have uh, national level data in the tool at this time. So it would just be all of Canada at this point. All right, great. So now at this point, we're going to open it up for questions on the phone. We'll go back to the chat as well to see if there were any other questions. Operator, can you please provide instructions for those on the phone? Certainly. At this time, please press star 1 on your touchtone phone, and please unmute your line to record your name if you would like to ask a question over the phone. Once again, it is star 1, and please record your name. And as stated, we do ask that you limit yourself to one question and one follow-up. Please stand by for questions. All right, so as we're waiting for calls to come in through the queue, a question came up again through the chat, and then we'll turn it back over to the call. Does USA Trade have the feature to upload a list of HTS codes? Let's say that I have codes that I'm interested in looking at or 20 to 30 codes that I'm interested in looking at. Does USA Trade Online have that feature to allow me to upload codes into the system? Yes, yeah, so this is Jeremy again. 
Uh, you can uh, upload your own uh, group of codes into USA Trade Online. So once you go into that commodity screen, above that you're going to see where it says Upload Selection Set, and it will allow you to upload uh, a CSV file. Uh, so you just have to have a list of codes um, separated, usually by uh, uh, if you hit enter, so you enter a 10 digit code, hit enter, and you have a list of that, you can upload it and it will automatically select it in. If you have any questions about how to do that, you can always call uh, the international trade line that was on the presentation. All right, great. Um, operator, do we have any calls? Any yes, questions on the queue? All right. Yes, we do, Mr. Wooden. Our first one's from Michael Grant. Sir, your line is open. Yeah, hello. I actually entered a question in the chat, which I guess didn't pop up for, for whatever reason. Uh, I was doing some research into U.S. exports of whiskey, and I noticed a very, very large discrepancy between the data on uh, the USA Trade uh, database and a report that I found from the USDA that was based on data from the Russian Customs Service. Uh, for, for several years, the numbers differed by like a factor of 300 to 800 times. Uh, can you help me understand what might be going on there? Um, so we, we obviously don't look at the Russian uh, uh, information, but there can be discrepancies in the data we collect versus what other uh, organizations collect, obviously. But you can actually um, uh, reach out to me, and I will give you a number where you can actually write this question, and we can look into our numbers to see if they are accurate. So we can go back and contact some of the uh, exporters of whiskey and make, verify that those shipments were actually accurate. Um, okay. Uh, who should I contact? So you can reach out to me, uh, Patrick Kuhn. Uh, Patrick Kuhn, okay. Yes, yeah, so uh, I, uh, I think my contact information is in the middle of the presentation. Okay, so I'll wait till the slides are available for download because I, I yeah. didn't write it down. Okay, thank you. Also, too, uh, just mentioned that um, the contact information we will make available through the chat line. So Patrick, both Patrick okay. and Morgan's contact information was in the slide, but we're actually going to send out their contact information through the chat feature so you can have their contact information right now. All right, operator, do we have any other questions? Yes, sir. Next question is from Carmelo Di Salvo. Your line is open. Uh, hi, uh, and thank you rather quickly. Thank you guys so much. This information is really, really beneficial. My question, um, I'm uh, starting out as an export broker, and uh, I was wondering if there's any information from ITA or export.gov or the U.S. Census on finding suppliers. I know there's finding export buyers in other countries, but is there any information on how to establish relationships with uh, suppliers, especially when a lot of companies um, already have contracts or agreements with, uh, with other companies, and it kind of whittles us small guys out. So I'll actually answer that question, and if my colleagues want to jump in as well, um, especially from the Census Bureau's perspective, we do not provide company-level detail or company-level disclosure as to who these companies are. However, what I would recommend in your case a lot of different entities and associations will have trade shows and conferences, such as a healthcare conference, a vehicle conference, you know, different types of manufacturing conferences. And many of those types of situations, I've seen brokers, couriers, and those types of entities reach out to those types of companies at those types of conferences to say, hey, if you're looking to export abroad, please feel free to contact me. There's also a National Customs and Forwarders National Customs Brokers and Freight Forwarders Association, and they have a large conglomerate where they're actually represented across the nation, and they have different methods of reaching out to U.S. businesses that they've already been working with and partnering with. Great. Thank you very much. Sure thing. Thank you. Our next question comes from Billy Obadio. Your line is open. Hi. Um, my question is regarding the diversification uh, part, and the algorithm uh, basically sets, you know, anywhere where they bought U.S. products from gives it 50%. And my qu real question is, doesn't that bias any developing countries or countries that have not had past history of purchasing from the U.S.? 
Um, so the standard set of weights in the algorithm um, is set to sort of, we, we use some um, econometric analysis to match it up with, so that the results would match up with where um, a good predictor of future exports. But of course, you can change those weights yourself. So if you were looking for smaller countries that were fast growing um, or larger mar versus larger markets, you can, you can definitely do that and adjust the, the weights. Those are just the standard weights. You are free to change those as much as you want as long as they all still add up to one. <laughs> right. No, and I completely agree because um, Anywhere where they bought the product from the U.S. before, I'm most likely an app to buy them from you also. So I thank you much. Appreciate it. Thank all the speakers. Thank you. Our next question comes from Hyundai Greenacre. Your line is open. Hyundai Greenacre, is that what you said? Um, my question is... Go ahead, sir. My apologies. Go ahead. Uh, I want to... In, in, um, import um, tire pyrolysis units from China, um, and I wanted to see how um, the process would work, so I guess it might be a one-on-one -on -one I love to do. But would the Chinese uh, financiers also be able to fund it, or should it only be through the um, Exim Bank? So, so my recommendation for that, sir, we had um, in the first webinar in this series, we actually had XM Bank as one of the speakers talking about financing, credit protection, and insurance. My recommendation is that webinar has been loaded onto our site, and I'm actually going to pull that site up on the screen. So if you go back to that URL at the top of the screen where you actually logged in today for today's webinar, you go back wow. there, you'll also then find the recording for that webinar as well, and then you can get contact information to touch base with XM Bank. Okay. Now, it, it, um, I read previously that it's available only for five days, so that has probably gone and won't be there? No, no. So if, if that was stated, it would take five days for it to be loaded, but it stays oh, okay. there for at least over a year, if I, not forever. Okay. Now, so the other thing is that if I have uh, to purchase an existing business or invest in an existing business, how would I do that? In, in different country. I'm not sure I understand your question. Okay, so let us say I have an, um, there is an existing business that is owned by somebody else in a different country, and I am asked uh, to do some investing to get maybe 50% ownership of that business. So how do I go about funding that to get ownership in that business? So um, that question, I think, is a bit out of scope for what we're discussing today in terms of purchasing and ownership and then focusing on then how to import. So that's out of scope for today. So I'm sorry I don't have an answer for you. But again, we've got different resources at the government that possibly was on a previous webinar, but that's, that's not really something we can address today. Okay. All right. Um, thank you so much. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Before we take our last question on the phone, just a reminder to press star 1 and record your name to be introduced. Our final question on the phone at this time is from Todd LeGrant. Your line is open, sir. Uh, thank you very much. I am uh, supporting and sitting in for CEO today who uh, I do IT support for. And my question is very basic and generic. Um, because of coming in at this juncture, I missed the earlier seminars. Um, this person would like to know what's required to register and use these resources. Um, how do the tools that were demonstrated today, uh, how would this individual use it, my CEO? Um, registering into the site, creating a password, log on, is this open to the public or you have to register as a business? Hi, uh, thanks for the question. Um, yes, these are free resources. Um, so for USA Trade Online, all you need is an email address. You can log in, create an account very simply. You will be assigned a username specific for your account, though. Um, then you just okay. log in, use that username for any future logins. Um, however, the Global Market Finder tool, um, there is no login. That is just through our website. Um, and so that's, that's very, just log in, go to the uh, link, uh, the URL there, and you can use the Global Market Finder uh, within, you know, for a matter of time. 
And the same uh, with the market diversification tool. It's just free and open to the public. Yeah. Great. Open resource. That's good to know. Thank you. All right. Um, operator, before we see if there are any other questions, one thing that I forgot to fail to mention is today's webinar is going to be recorded and it will be available within a few days. So everything that we have been discussing today, if there was possibly, again, someone that may have dialed on late and missed the first part, or you think this was great information, very useful information, you'd like to see it again, or share it with colleagues, it's going to be recorded and it will be available again at the same place where you went to log in today, it's going to be posted there in a few days. So you can always come back and check that site, and the recording and the presentation will be available today. Um, operator, do we have any other questions? No, Mr. Wooden, we did not. Okay. So what we would like to do now, uh, we'd like to, I'd like to thank everyone on the phone that attended and participated. I'd like to thank our speakers today for providing a wealth of information. The slide that is up now provides contact information for both the U.S. Census Bureau and Morgan at International Trade Administration. I even have information to help with trade barriers, which was a previous topic we had discussed in another webinar. But again, you can still reach out and touch base with them if you have questions about trade barriers or different issues that you are facing. So again, keep in mind our webinar, our next webinar and last webinar of the series will be opportunities in international development, ways that you can expand abroad but also be a help to the world. So make sure that you dial back in. Again, it's at 2 p.m. next Thursday. We're looking forward to seeing you then. Thank you again for everybody that attended and participated, and thank you again.